So here I've got a nice problem that uses the notion of implicit differentiation. So let's see what we have. We want to find the angle between tangents to the following circle that also go through the origin. So this circle is going to de be defined by this quadratic in two variables. We've got x squared plus y squared minus 12x minus 16y plus 75 equals 0. So it's not super necessary to get an idea where this circle lives in the plane and draw a picture, but I think it kind of motivates what's going on here. So I want to put this in the so-called standard form, which is going to involve completing the square in the x part and the y part. So let's do that real quick. So I'm going to write this as x squared minus 12x, and then leave a little gap there to add something so that we can complete the square. We'll do the same thing with y. So we'll have y squared minus 16y, and then I've got my little gap plus 75 equals 0. So I haven't done anything yet, but now I can complete the square. So let's recall, in order to complete the square of these quadratic type terms, you want to take half of the middle term and square it. So we've got half of negative 12, that's negative 6. We square it, that means we'll need to add 36 here. Then half of 16 is 8, we'll square that and get 64, so that means we'll add 64 here. That means we've added 36 plus 64, which is 100. That means we need to add 100 to the right-hand side of the equation, but we might as well just take this 75 and then only add 25 to the right-hand side of the equation. So now we can factor this as x minus 6 squared plus y minus 8 squared equals 25, which is 5 squared. So that tells us that our center is in the first quadrant, and it's at the point 6 comma 8. And then we have a radius of square root of 25, which is 5. So let's maybe use this data to get a picture of this circle up over here. Okay, so we've got a general picture here. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. So notice we've got our center of our circle at 6, 8, and then I've given it a radius of 5. Now notice, we want to find the angle between the tangents that are on the circle and that go through the origin. So if we think about all the lines that go through the origin that are tangent to this circle, you'll see that we'll get one that goes below the circle and one that goes above the circle. So we'll get one line that is something like this and another line which is something like that. So in fact, what we would really like to find is this intersection point right here and this intersection point right here. And then we can go about maybe using some geometry of vectors to calculate this angle, which I'll call theta. So maybe let's start off by taking the implicit derivative of this equation, which defines the circle, so that we can get an idea of the slope of the tangent line in terms of which point on the circle we're at. So taking the derivative of this, we'll have 2 times x minus 6 plus 2 times y minus 8 times y prime equals 0. Taking the derivative of the x minus 6 squared part is just like normal, but then taking the derivative of the y part, since y depends on x, we need a y prime. So there, we're taking the implicit derivative. So notice we can divide both sides of this equation by 2, and then just get rid of those 2s, and then solve and easily get y prime equals x minus 6 over 8 minus y, where I've just like switched the order of the subtraction 8 minus y so that we have like the leading term is positive just so that it's nice. So that's one way of measuring a slope of a tangent line to this circle. And let's maybe look at another way of measuring a slope of a tangent line. So let's say this point right here is x1, y1, and then this point up here is x2, y2. So just to reiterate, these two are on the tangent lines to the circle that go through the origin. That means that we can calculate the slope of these lines pretty easily. So notice that the slope of this line, using just standard change of y over change of x, will be y1 
over x1, and then likewise, the slope of this, just using change of y over change of x, will also be just y2 over x2. So for these two special points, we have two ways of calculating the slope. Just by change of y over change of x, given the fact that the origin is on the line, or by using this derivative, this implicit derivative. So let's maybe put those together so that we can get some sort of equation for solving for those points. So let's write yi over xi. So that'll be the slope calculated one way, and this is where i is either one or two, because we can do them both at the same time. But that's also going to be equal to xi minus six over eight minus yi. This is the slope using change of y over change of x, considering that the origin is on the line. This is the slope using the fact that we took the derivative. Okay, so now we've got an equation that relates xi with yi. In other words, like x1 with y1 or x2 with y2. So let's see if we can get anything out of this. So cross multiplying, we'll have eight times yi minus yi squared equals xi squared minus six times xi. That may not seem super helpful because we only have one equation, but two unknowns. But I wanna notice that we know that x1, y1, x2, y2, in other words, xi, yi is also on the circle. So that gives us another equation that xi, yi has to satisfy. And that would be this one right here but maybe we would like to write it in this form up here. So also we have xi squared plus yi squared minus 12xi minus 16yi plus 75 equals zero. So again, our slope argument gave us this equation. The fact that we're on the circle gave us this second equation. So let's see where we can go from here. We would probably like to take this first equation and set it up so that maybe zero is on one side so that it can easily be combined with the second equation. So let's see, that's gonna give us xi squared plus yi squared minus 6xi minus eight yi equals zero. So now we've got two equations. We've got this one up here, which I'll call equation one, this one down here, which I'll call equation two. But notice if we subtract equation one minus equation two, we can get rid of all of the quadratic part because the xi squared and the yi squared will cancel. Then we'll have minus six xi minus negative 12 xi. That's gonna give us six xi. And then similarly for the yi parts, plus eight uh, yi minus 75 equals zero. So we've got something like that, but now notice that's a linear relationship between xi and yi. In fact, we get that yi is equal to 75 minus six xi over eight. Now, where can we go from here? We can take this expression for yi and plug it into this polynomial, and then we'll have just a quadratic polynomial for the variable xi. Then we can solve that quadratic polynomial. So let's maybe get rid of this uh, side of the board and we'll finish it off like that. So on the last board, we noticed that yi could be expressed in terms of xi as 75 minus six xi all over eight. And then we had the following quadratic expression in xi and yi. Now we can plug this value of yi into this quadratic expression, and we'll be left with a quadratic equation for the x part. Now, in other words, that'll allow us to solve for x1 and x2. Then we can plug it in here and find y1 and y2. Okay, so let's see what we get when we plug this value for yi into this quadratic polynomial. So we'll get xi squared plus 75 minus 6xi all over 8 quantity squared. So that's going to be kind of a bit of a mess, but it won't be really too bad in the end. And then minus 6xi minus 75 plus 6xi, and this is going to be equal to 0. So notice I distributed the minus sign and the 8 to kill that 8 that's in the denominator. Okay, let's see where we can go from here.
So notice that this six and this six xi will cancel. So that's pretty nice. And then we've got a quadratic polynomial in xi squared. So I'm not gonna work out the details. I'll let you guys expand that out and use the quadratic formula or whatever to find the solutions. I'll just jump to having the values of x1 and x2. So after solving this quadratic equation for x1 and x2, then plugging those values up here to find y1 and y2, we'll have the following two points. So notice x1, y1 is half nine plus four root three, comma three halves four minus root three. And then the x2, y2 is essentially the same, just with the radical conjugate in both parts. Now, let's see where we can go from here. I would maybe think about this as being a vector. So maybe this is vector v1, and then thinking the second one as vector v2. And now notice that that makes vector v1 the vector pointing in this direction right here. And then vector v2 will be the po vector pointing in the direction of this line right here. In other words, the vectors that are defining our two tangent lines. But now we can use a well-known formula for the angle between two vectors, which says that cosine theta, where theta is the angle between these two vectors, is equal to v1 dot v2 over the magnitude of v1 times the magnitude of v2. So if you do v1 dot v2, you'll see that you get 75 over two. And if you do the magnitude of v1 times the magnitude of v2, you'll get 75. So that's just an arithmetic calculation that's not too bad. So in the end, you'll get the cosine of the angle between these two lines is a half. But when is cosine a half? Well, cosine is a half when theta is equal to pi over three. So we found that angle between the tangent lines, and that's a good place to stop.